Hey, hey guys, my name is Samron, and I'm graduating this Friday, and I'm juice. <laughs> um, so um, my topic is climate change, and I chose this topic because um, it's really it's been a really important thing to me since I was at a young age. Because I'm scared of hurricanes and tornadoes and heat. I, as you guys know, I wear sweaters every day to school. I don't like heat. I'm not a heat person. So you guys are going to be looking at this picture and be like, why are you showing this to us while there's like a burning earth and like fried fish sticks or whatever they are? <laughs> well, for one, um, this is like a metaphor um, for the earth, because that's what climate change is doing to our earth right now. It's actually burning us down, like the earth. It's increasing in size and it's burning the core too. And that's basically us on the right. Um, we're, we're literally fried. Like if the heat waves keep increasing, we'll, we'll be looking like that in a few, few decades or years. So my question is, um, how does climate change affect our health, our culture, and natural disasters in the United States? And similarly, my thesis is the same thing. And I'm gonna prove how climate change affects our health, our culture, and natural disasters. So what is climate change? Climate change is when um, greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide is stored inside um, the Earth's atmosphere. And um, that increases the temperature of the Earth by a lot. And as you guys can see, it's been, we're having, we've been having a heat wave this week. Effects of climate change. And um, this is a graph, so ignore this slide. Um, this is for the plants. Um, sorry you guys can't see the years or anything, but the bottom is um, 1996 and the top is 2010. And that shows how the plants have been, aff um, been affecting, um, have been affected around the world. And um, 1996, not much was affected on a lot of plants, um, mostly in South America and a little bit of Africa. But as you can see in 2010, almost everything is red, and that's how many um, forest fires that have occurred, or that's how many you know, plants have been burned down and destroyed by climate change. And this is a graph for the oceanography it's by the Earth System Research Laboratory, and this shows um, the water levels that have increased over time from 1960 all the way to 2010. And as you guys can see, it's like a constant linear line and it's been increasing year by year. So how does it affect our health? Well, climate change for one causes cancer, skin cancer to be exact, and um, heat strokes and dehydration. And um, they have actually fluctuated um, in the United States um, as the temperatures keep increasing each year. So personal story, a girl named Emma Fitzsimons um, in Texas is an um, excessive tanner. She loves the sun, she does sun activities. And she was diagnosed with melanoma cancer, and that's a really, um, that's a really bad skin cancer. And because she, she was always tanning, always out in the sun, and then when the doctor diagnosed with the cancer, he also told her that she was being affected by sun radiation and rays. And um, recently, a lot of sun radiation has been coming into the earth because there's a layer um, above the earth called the ozone layer, and that has been decreasing year by year, um, which lets in more sunlight and more rays. And by 2050, um, skin cancer will increase by 21% um, between men and women. And this is a graph that shows um, the health impacts um, climate change has on health. And the direct exposure is obviously sun that's been affecting us the most. And the indirect is basically the food we eat, the water, um, the fluids, the ecosystem, and the industries that affect us because of carbon dioxide. So how does it affect our agriculture? Well, the carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases um, in the air fasten the process of photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is um, when light from the sun is converted into energy for the plant. And if energy is increased inside a plant, that means that premature plants will be grown out. That means the crops of food we eat will be um, let out into market and it's not fully grown. It's like still premature. Um, so that's, that's not a good thing at all. That affects our health too because we might have bacteria in the plant. It's not fully um, grown. And floods and droughts are one of the main things too because um, when a lot of a water is vaporized with the heat into the atmosphere, um, it's let down as in storms, like intense storms, and um, that destroys a crop wholly because it pulls it out of its roots, or just droughts that dry, dry up plants. And this is a um, graph that shows emissions um, by industries. And this um, mostly carbon dioxide has been affecting us the most, 72%. Methane and nitrous um, oxide haven't been affecting us that much. And that's just a graph that shows the whole um, what type of industry, what type of fuels, fossil fuels, um, residential, and agriculture that has been affecting us um, as a whole that make up the CO2. 
Um, how does it affect um, natural disasters? Um, well, as I said before, when a water is vaporized into the atmosphere, uh, there's a lot of water that's still stored up in the clouds, um, sometimes you guys can see too. Um, it's later lit down as, as in storms, and sometimes when warm air and cold air cannot fuse um, into each other, it creates tornadoes. And tornadoes are one of the most deadliest things because once they occur, they wipe out everything in its way. And that's mostly happening, um, they mostly um, occur in the south and the southeast. Um, and storms such as cy tropical cyclones have been starting to move up north, so near our coast. So that means currently west coast and east coast of the United States are in danger. Because if storms move, uh, move up and cyclones move up, that means that um, uh, water levels will rise and we might have hurricanes or tsunamis that can affect those too. Um, the Antarctic sheet melt. Um, so this is something that happened on May 12, 2014, and this is a really big thing that um, occurred this um, year. And this is when in Antarctic, um, a glacier, the biggest glacier um, sheet had melted, Wachi came onto the, um, came into water, like it just melted right off. And um, according to NASA, um, 10 feet, uh, feet of water will rise um, throughout this whole year. So that also, um, again, dangerous our east and west coast because um, obviously we're like the coastline, like the Bay Area, we're surrounded by water. So if uh, water is increased, then that means that we will have floods and like a lot of different things, like droughts, droughts maybe, if heat keeps increasing. And this is um, Hurricane Katrina, and this is um, from 2005. Uh, this um, hurricane lasted seven days, to be exact, and uh, this uh, hurricane destroyed millions of people and houses, and it, like it cost nine trillion um, dollars in um, 2005 to rebuild that whole city. And that's also a graph that on the United States for climate change. This is from 1980 to 2011, and as you can see, um, it's been um, increasing a lot. And that's also the linear line, but um, in between places like such as this or that, they um, have decreased. But every year, like you, you never know, it can increase or it can decrease. So currently, we're increasing because of climate change, water levels are rising, natural disasters are rising. That's and uh, the solutions for skin cancer, um, the only solution I will tell you is protect yourself. The sun, it's everywhere, obviously. I'll wear sunscreen or some kind of lotion that protects you from the sun. Especially if you're light skin, like I'm really like, um, I have really light skin tone, so I have to wear sunscreen oils. I'm more prone to skin cancer than people with a darker skin tone. And uh, for dehydration and heat strokes, um, always drink water, stay healthy. Um, if you guys think that the sun is really affecting you, or it's taking a toll on you, then be careful when you go out in the sun. Don't do a lot of sun activities. For agriculture and natural disasters, no proven solutions have been found yet because it's a really, um, it's kind of just changing over time, so we like we can't really do anything about it, um, other than getting rid of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases, and we can't do that either because we're everywhere. And that's why we're excited. So, any questions? Take precautions, like always have extra food in your house. Like I know um, when tornadoes or tsunamis occur in the south of um, the United States, uh, they're, always, they're always preparing by having a lot of water in their house, a lot of foods, they have money saved and everything. So I would say that you should always have that in case because you never know because we are in the Bay Area, we're surrounded by completely by water. So you might be needing like food or anything um, if the um, water levels do um, increase. And for the second question for reversing it, um, I don't think I really, I really don't think that there's a glacier you can actually like reverse like the water levels or do anything. 
because there hasn't been anything proven to it because over time glaciers have been obviously melting and you can't, we can't really do anything about it um, other than getting rid of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases. But we also, carbon dioxide is one of the most important things for plants. That's how they kind of grow, that's like one of their um, nutrients. So there's not really proven anything, they haven't come across anything in the research. So sorry for the first question, I meant like, not like individually, but maybe just the country or the state, like is there anything we can do if you're saying like this water is going to rise? Is there any precautions other than like the news? You know, keeping up with that. Yeah, I um yeah, like not only the Bay Area like I talked about, I think you can also do it for like every but like every um, country or I mean every city or country or state can do it too. Like especially on the coast, mostly the coast is Jane Bader, like the East Coast and the West Coast. So mostly them having a lot of food, like be being prepared for it, like obviously having money, going to um, grocery store, buying like packs of water. Like mostly what they usually do, um, when you, if you see on the news, like um, there will be a lot of like states like gathering water, going to supermarkets, gathering food if it's coming. But I would mostly um, say that keep up with the news, like keep, like I know Healy says social media is bad, but sometimes it can help you too, if you see things like those. So I would say keep up with the news, ABC or anything. Yeah, thank you. Oh, um, I think Ms. Lou was trying to explain how to like, uh, clarify what she said. She, I think she means like, what can like cities on the coastline do to prevent like, not water anything, but like building like walls or barriers. So like, uh, so the the drought and stuff won't won't affect the cities and stuff like that. Like, what what can uh, the cities and like the state on the coastline do? Okay, so there's the um, I learned about it while researching. They said if you live in the coast. Um, there's like bags of sand, like well, most people can, um, collect bags of sand, and they kind of build um, barriers and walls by the ocean sides, by um, especially the Bay Area, like they kind of like build around it, and those sand kind of absorb the water like how they do um, when you go to the beach. So that's one of the ways you can obviously stop water from coming and flooding. In. 